church, ooh, a week on Sunday, and uh, we found out that she was a medium. One of our members said, do you know that lady's a medium? And uh, you better get her hooked. So here she is tonight. <laughs> Here she is tonight. She's been serving the Spirit for a little while now, and she travels all over the Southern District. She comes to us from Verwood, which is a little drive, you know, from here. And we are delighted to welcome her tonight to our meeting. So can I ask you to give a nice warm welcome to Hazel Brewer. <laughs> so as you know, it's Hazel's first time in our church, and I know you're going to be kind to her, around you? Oh, some of you can And this time I'd like to invite Hazel to open our meeting in prayer. Thank you, Hazel. Let us pray. Great Spirit, open our hearts and our minds and allow us to see the beauty that surrounds us every day, even when we least feel it. Allow us to know your presence is close by and allow us to just know that we're never alone. Be with us always. Amen. 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 Friends, as most of you know by now, we don't have any creed or dogma in spiritualism, but we do have certain principles given to us through the Transmediumship of Emma Hardings Britain, given allegedly from spirit by Robert Owen, that great socialist and founder of the cooperative movement. They're in the picture frame on the wall to your right, and I always recite them before each service or meeting. Number one is the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man, the communion of spirits and the ministry of angels, the continuous existence of the human soul, personal responsibility, compensation and retribution hereafter for all the good and evil deeds done on earth, eternal progress open to every human soul. So certain principles upon which the philosophy of spiritualism is built. Well friends, at this time I'm going to invite Hazel to give us her address for this evening. Thank you, Hazel. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. It's nice to see you all here. But why are we here? In reality, what are we doing here? And I don't mean here in this church, and I don't mean here in the UK for our American visitors. I mean, why were we born? Big question that, isn't it? Some say the number 69 is the answer, but you need to know the answer to that to know that. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Some people say we are here because we are here to learn as if we're in a school, and this is a big school, and we are here to learn. Others say that we are here to simply experience, and that our individual experience allows us to make our soul grow, so that it's not simply the experience we have here and now, it's a much larger thing. And yet others say that not only do we experience life individually, but collectively, because our purpose is for making the human race push forward in its growth and move forward in its ability to experience more and more and more. I don't know, I'm only me, um, but I do know I question why I'm here. There are many, many reasons why things happen in our lives. Some people say coincidence. I'm not sure I believe in coincidence. Some people have a lot of views. I think I have a lot of questions. Because it's easy to have views, is it not? I know I've got quite a few. So, why are we here? Have we actually progressed? Well, if we look at ourselves from the time of the caveman, clearly we have progressed, have we not? It's fairly evident. 
and it doesn't matter which aspect of life you look at, there has been a progression. If we look at our mechanical advancement, there are machines for everything today, are there not? Even dusters, there are mechanical dusters. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, the basic things of life, like washing up, we don't need to do it anymore. Washing our clothes, we don't physically tend to do it anymore. There are so many machines that often it should give us a lot more time. Then we look at the me medical world. That has advanced beyond belief. And if we tack on not only the medical world, we also tack on the dental world. I mean, I'm assuming some of you will know that only a hundred years ago, when you got to be the age of 21, people would give you money. And that money was purely so you could go and have all of your teeth out. 21 years of age have all of your teeth extracted. And that was a wonderful present because they didn't want you, your loved ones didn't want you to suffer the agonies that they had had to suffer in their lifetimes coming up to that point. What a fabulous 21-year-old present. Can you imagine the 21-year-olds today thinking that was wonderful? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> but the me medical world as well. How advanced <coughs> have we come? In my lifetime, we have seen off, we hope forever, some diseases that we thought we would never get rid of. But, you know, our advancement is such that people that would have died in their very early years, or perhaps may not even have been allowed to be born to have a life, are now living until ripe old age because we have advanced. And yet, advanced? Technologically speaking, we're fabulous, aren't we? Like that. I can be talking to somebody in America, Australia, New Zealand, next door, anywhere, anywhere in the world. Pictures can go out and they are seen worldwide. And this has in itself brought about change because it is shedding light on places where there was dark. For example, places where people were very much oppressed, where now, because of technology, that light is shining and they're no longer being able to oppress their people, if that makes sense. So, yes, we are progressing. And yet, are we progressing? As individuals, are we really progressing? I think a lot comes down to judgment. How do we judge things? Mm -hmm. Last week, my husband and I took a few days away and we beetled off down to Cornwall. It's a beautiful place, well recommended. But while we were there, I was aware and painfully aware how he and I had judged three things and we were so wrong. We arrived at our hotel having taken the drive and you know what it's like when you first arrive, you think, oh, I just want to get in the room, chill out, then go off out to play, as you do, I do. Arrived at this hotel, which in my head was four or five star, oh dear, mm -mm. no. The pictures appeared to be that, the write-ups appeared to be that, when we arrived, well, what can I tell you? We looked at each other and thought, mm, have we picked the wrong place? Having paid? Oh dear. So we had to get into the hotel up a very narrow stairway, tiled stairway. Most of the tiles were either cracked or completely broken. We got into the reception area and it was narrow, small, claustrophobic even, very, very heavy dark wood, 
really not inviting at all. And we thought, um, should we even bother putting our bags in? <laughs> but we thought, you know, we'll, get, we'll find somewhere else tomorrow. Let's just settle for one night. In went the bags. Off we went out to play, still thinking, oh my goodness. But we looked around for some other hotels in case we needed an escape route. By the morning, we didn't want to escape. It was wonderful. The difference was the people. The staff were highly attentive, couldn't do enough for you, so friendly, so nice. The rooms were clean, couldn't fault it. The food was good, couldn't fault it. Why did we want to go? Did we want to go to a bigger place, a more imposing place that was impersonal? Nah, we decided to stay. And how lucky we were, because from our restaurant, it was almost as if we were on a cruise ship, because we were boats sailing by us all the time. How wonderful is that? That was our error number one. Number two. We're quite um, good on wildlife, we love wildlife, so we went off to a wildlife park. First of all, it was down an extremely narrow road, couldn't see over the hedges, didn't think we were getting there properly. <coughs> when we arrived, oh dear, again, not very inviting. We were the only car in the car park, which is always a good sign, isn't it? And we're thinking, oh well, you know, we've found it, we'll spend 20 minutes here, just have a look around and then we'll go and move on. <laughs> Six hours later, we left. Huge grins on our faces. Are you all right down there? <laughs> Huge grins on our faces. Couldn't have been happier. Wildlife came and literally ate out of our hands. Beautiful. What more could you want? That was error number two. Error number three, I've told you about us and wildlife. We went to a butterfly farm and otter sanctuary on the way back. Again, we arrived and thought, um, again, several hours later, two very happy little bunnies left. Judgment. Why were we judging things of which we had no knowledge? Really, how silly were we? But how lucky were we that those judgments were only about places and unimportant happenings, unimportant in the scheme of things? What if those places had been people and we had been making judgments about them? That would have been a very, very different thing, wouldn't it? But don't we all judge? Don't we all do it? You know, you look at people, you look at their hairstyle, you look at their clothing, you look at their tattoos, and you think, mm, I'll just walk on the other side of the street just in case. <laughs> Why? I used to rent out holiday lets and student lets over the summer. No, the other way around. Student lets over the summer, holiday lets over the... Oh, you know what I'm saying. Anyway. A couple of girls came to me, young girls, they were in college, and they were, I think they were punks. They had the Mohican hairstyle, really pointed up there, um, really big rings and out of every orifice piercings, chains hung over everything, and they said to me, Quite openly, we can't find anybody to take us in. And I thought, oh, I wonder why. You know, can't imagine why myself. <laughs> but something told me, you know, they seem okay. They feel okay. I took them. Much to my husband's chagrin initially. Mm -hmm. But they were the best ever students, ever. They cooked Sunday lunches, they kept the place immaculate, they brought home flowers. The way they looked, nothing to do with it. <clears throat> the way they behaved, 
wonderful. And yet there were other students who looked the business, particularly those studying accountancy, I have to tell you, never paid their rent, never had any money, etc., etc. What can I, sorry if there are accountants in here, by the way. <laughs> so, you know, you just can't judge, can you? But judgment is something that we all do, isn't it? We place people in boxes. And so have we actually moved forward from caveman times? When I look around, I feel that a lot of us are so entrenched in the way our parents, our grandparents, our traditions have been that we find it sometimes hard to think outside of the box because we almost inculcate the same way of being time after time after time. Why? If we are here to experience and to learn, where is the moving forward? Do you see what I'm saying? Why are we doing exactly the same things time after time? and looking at people in the same way, time after time. You know, it doesn't take a lot before you can find around you discord. Look in any organisation, whatever the organisation is, you lift the lid and there will be separate factions vying for supremacy one way or another. If you look at families, you don't need to look far before you see families who become so disjointed they become estranged or friends that stop talking to each other. And it strikes me, as people, we sometimes find it easier to worry and fight rather than find a way of tolerating and being happy together. Because I know I would like to. I know most people would like to, but do we? Do we really? It's so much harder to find a nice middle ground than it is to stand on our, what we consider to be the right point of view, because we've all got a point of view, have we not? And um, sometimes it's easier to stand on our point of view than to actually give a little ground to the other person that we might actually learn ourselves. Sorry, I'm not that used to a static mic, I'm used to walking around with them. So, have we really moved forward? I think we have. I really do think we have. And I also think that with a little bit more love in our hearts, we can move yet forward further. But it starts with us. We need, first and foremost, to love ourselves, because once we love ourselves wholly, then those ripples of love can't do anything else but move out to others. And maybe that's our first step. You know. Thank you very much, and that, that's really given us food for thought, hasn't it? And I can just see the cogs going around in the brains now saying, now I've got a question here, and uh, all I can see one who's anxious already. I'm anxious. <laughs> <laughs> and the medium will give you the benefit of her knowledge. As we always say in spiritualism, we never tell anybody what they have to accept or believe. But if it sits right with you, the answer, then accept it. If it doesn't, just throw it out. Because we you know. Free will, that's what we have now. I know we have a question already. Ron. Yeah, thank you. I don't usually ask questions. <laughs> I'm honoured. I, um, I thought your opening of that short synopsis was brilliant. Thank you. Really brilliant. I, I think that we was all, we, put, we was put here for a purpose. Purposes, and one of those purposes was development. Now, I know there's probably people in here a bit older than me, probably. I'm 84. <laughs> now, I was brought up as a child in the East End of London in the slums. We had no television, no washing machine, no phone, no central heating, no fridge. But 
we carried on through life then, I met uh, my wife, that's the one, and our purpose in, li in life was progress. And we did progress. We had our own business, we run an East London pub, we had a couple of children. Now, our children are progress, but they got washing machines, dishwashers, <coughs> and that. So, we had progress completely. So now can I ask you a question? Of course. <laughs> um, when did you first realise that you had contact with spirit? Or was it something that you sat in a circle and developed? If that's not too difficult to answer. It's not difficult to answer. Um, I'm actually a third generation. Having said that, I was not brought up as somebody that had contact with spirit. My mother and my grandmother, who were the, the mediums before me, very definitely didn't want me to um, be moulded. They wanted me to find out for myself. So while I was having experiences, um, they were just normal, commonplace everything. I then switched off for a number of years, literally switched off. Um, because life came, you know, I had my family, I moved abroad, I blah, blah, blah. But then I was walking along a very, very busy sandy beach. Um, lots of sun, lots of noise, lots of everything. When everything went black and there stood my grandmother. As if to say, come on, it's time to get back. And it's from that point that I came back. Um, I don't know if that's actually answered your question or not. How old were you at that time? Oh, I was knocking on a bit. I must have been... Uh... Well, you're not knocking on now, so you <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> don't give him any more glasses. Those are fine. <laughs> uh, I must have been knocking on 40 by the time I came back. Um, somewhere there. Yeah. 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 What made me like right with you, what you were talking about? Um, just recently, I've had a new lens put in the eye. Congratulations. And, and I can see again. And Wonderful. So that is development. It is development. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. How, how lucky are we all? That's it. So thank you for answering the question. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> thank you, Rolly. Now, oh, yeah, we have another. Oh, we're in good form tonight, don't we? No. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, we, as it's been proved, we have developed in our physical and our, you know, our needs in life. Have we developed spiritually? Have the mediums of today developed further or have, have they regressed? Now, there's a question. Somewhat political, I would have said. Um, can I take the Fifth Amendment? Oh, we don't have it here, do we? <laughs> I think it really depends upon your perspective. The mediums of yesteryear, our towering mediums, our really well-known mediums, had a lot more, in, in, I would say, given to them because people of those times needed, in, in effect, more, because we didn't have television, we didn't have this, that and the other. But to use the kind of effects that went on then, today, I, in my head, I don't feel it is that necessary, because people are, I guess, more aware and yet more cynical at the same time. I've been to um, uh, places where, for example, I have physically shaken the hand of a gentleman called Jonathan who died probably before I was born. He was a porter in Billingsgate Market. And I have shaken his physical hand. I have seen ectoplasm. Frankly, I never, ever want to see that again. Have any of you here, put your hands up, being close to the ectoplasmic 
revolting or what? <coughs> Absolute. Did, did you enjoy it? Did you enjoy that? I don't think I enjoyed it, but I thought how blessed I was to actually. Have I, I agree. Choice. Blessed I was. Yes. Do I want to repeat that particular blessing? No. <laughs> It was a. It was. It was something that I personally don't need. But I do know that today there are cravings from some of us who haven't witnessed it to witness it. If did that answer your question? Not really. I think that. Uh, I think mediumship has gone back. I, I, don't, I don't think we hear of the Diddy Gong and all these uh, in Gordon Higginson. Mm -hmm. Where are they? I mean, you know, there's so, there's so many. Uh, one that I mentioned uh, the other day, uh, Tekla Khan. You know, these were mediums, these were. I'm going Everything now. It seems now to be on the, uh, on the mediums that are well known, it's because they're doing the halls. Yes. To me, I don't like that, but that's like, uh, you know, um, why do want the wealth that uh, we accumulate? I, I can't, I can't. To me, it's a slightly different thing. Yes, but the mediumship, uh, from where we come into it, uh, is. It's not the same. It isn't the same. But it's then it, same. It, it's never going to be the same because everything is progressing. It doesn't have to be the same anymore. No, but why doesn't spirit? Uh, why aren't they more active? I ask this question directly to spirit just a week or so ago. Uh, and and the answer you it received was, was... It wasn't satisfactory, the answer. My wife is a transmitter, by the way, and um, uh, you know, it's no problem me, me talking to Spirit, either myself or yes. her. Um, it wasn't satisfactory, and, yeah, and it's always bland what they come back with. Well, we can't push it, we can't, we're waiting for, you know, more people into the movement and why can't they do something that gets them gets the people such as but but such as come back to where i was saying about you've got your television you've I got agree. you know you've got everything technological i agree how yeah. how what have they yeah. to do that, that would not be deemed a stunt? Uh, I know. Uh, people used to sit. Did they not? Daily. Day and night. They used to sit. They the did. Physical. They did. The physical's gone down the next hour. So what doesn't it? Well. I see physical. How many people here will have actually seen the physical? I have. We have ourselves. Hmm. But I mean, I was not impressed with it. Hmm. Transfiguration, I've never seen, I've never seen anyone transfig. No. You know, um, <sighs> I'm just, I'm getting dodged here, so keep me not sure. <laughs> no, so, because uh, the thing is, you have every right to what you think. Okay. This is the whole point, isn't it? But as I'm going to be judged heavily, I'm going before no, I start. <laughs> no, I tend to expect a bit more from spirit, a bit. I think, I think, no, where you're making a mistake is that it's not spirit that aren't making the effort, it's us in the human body that aren't making the effort because we have too many distractions. Yes. As Hazel said, you know, the mediums of yesterday didn't have all of these things. Their husbands generally went out to work, where it was women, and their wives had all the time in the world, not that they didn't work, Oh, but at all the time we were to sit and develop without distraction. Yeah. There are so many distractions around now that our spirit must find it terribly difficult, yeah. you know, to, to get through to a medium. And you know, on the other hand, we are very much too judgmental. We are very judgmental. You know, we are very judgmental. And it's, it has progressed. Mediumship has progressed, it's now mental mediumship. Yes. They've got, Spirit will say they've gone past that stage of the physical, and though many of us would like to say that I have seen a little 
but many of us would like to see it. It's progression, and I don't think, unless Spirit had that wish to do it, it used to complete the mediums terribly, the physical medium. Sure. There was, you very rarely saw a medium that was in good health. Yeah. And the Spirit weren't happy about that. And I know from what I've heard that they're working on an, an energy whereby they can bring that back, but it will not deplete the medium. Ted Meadows' is circle, I think that's his name. Have you heard of him? Yeah. Uh, he works on energy. Brilliant. It's just changing times to know a meeting called Ted Meadows. Mm. There are so many around the country that we in the South you know, don't always hear about. Yes, you know, of course. That's the thing. Now, who's got the next? Oh, oh right. <laughs> Yes, I came across a uh, spiritual medium yesterday who used to be a member here as a medium. She was saying about how spirit or those working with her have told her that it's all past and one has to move on to other things. Now, I was very disturbed with that because I didn't see that at all. Now, that might be her belief and you have brought up different things we're all in different places, think different things. I felt very unhappy with that remark. I'm really asking the question, um, I can't make much sense. How do you see it? Do you see that we move on away from spiritualism? No, I don't see that we will move on away from our connections with spirit or spiritualism. But what I do see is a continual and gradual evolving. Um, not that anything is, is lost but it's no longer the way it was yes. if that if that makes sense um, because it can't be the way it was because we are not the way we were we are a very different generation to the generation that went before and the one before that it cannot be the same so even if they move away from churches or move away from being a medium is it because they've got some other direction that doesn't make sense to me? It could simply be life comes and collects them. As I said, I moved out of um, whatever it was I was doing as a younger person until uh, my grandmother came and collected me. Um, maybe they needed time away. You know, the, the, whatever you do, if you do it a lot, you can become jaded, whatever you do, even as wonderful as our connections can be. Right. You need to sometimes, like I went on holiday for a few days, yes. you need time away. It doesn't stop you coming back. It doesn't stop you. Look at the Dalai Lama, for example. He's devoted all of his life, I mean the older one, he devoted all of his life to helping his people but he has said very clearly, I want to now devote time to me and my own spiritual growth. So maybe that's the answer. Thank maybe you. it is. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, no, here's what I remember, because she was here a week on Sunday when the wonderful Mark Stone hmm. took the evening service. And I know you will remember that Mark said that he had a dream that one day there would not be any more churches, there would be no more churches. Hmm that people would be spiritual and they wouldn't need exactly. places. Exactly. And, you know, this could be the way that it's heading. We just have to look at our churches, mm. the way we don't have so many people. And two, three years ago now, if we had 65 or 70 on a Sunday evening, we were quiet. Now, I think last night we had about 35 or 36. Mm. Um, you know, people, technology has really not done us a great lot of good. Yes, yes it's wonderful, you know, but um, I was reading something that Albert Einstein said, and he said, this is going back many, many years ago, and he said he foresaw in the future that technology would overtake all other things and that we would be breeding um, a generation of idiots. Now, that was his words. But all you have to do is watch them down as they're walking down the street. You can have little children walking in front of them and behind them. But the phone is stuck to their ears and they're talking. And if you were to say, why don't you come to all my spiritual church, they'd probably give you an answer. <laughs> it probably wouldn't be a very nice one. So we have to move with the times, don't we? We have to move forward. And when spirits already 
believe me, there's an old saying, when they want you, they'll get you. Oh, absolutely, they will. But who's, who's can I just come back to the gentleman who said he didn't like people on um, going around the halls and things? All they are doing is putting out to the masses that won't come into churches the fact that you can never die. What a wonderful message is that? Okay, they're getting rich because of it, but you know. So. Uh, I agree, and I know that's a fact. It I doesn't like rest well. I don't no. like what the charge, I'm totally against it. But that's me. Yeah. Yeah, there is, a, there is a side to it where they are probably taking it out to a greater audience. Mm. It would be wonderful if that greater audience would come into places like this and see those that don't get the chance to go on the mm. TV, you know. Right, well, can we have another question? Pass it, yeah. Hey, so Hello. I'm really enjoying this evening. Thank you. Oh, no, thank um, you. I was going to actually ask something that uh, uh, Joe and Al uh, actually touched on, but having about the future of spiritualism. But I was going to say about my own personal development, uh, which I've made a huge amount from um, talks, um, for, um, for, <laughs> sorry, for a sorry for addresses, reading. And I think on a personal level, uh, you, you can progress. I, I now feel, even from someone saying you have to love people as they are, if I, could, I try really hard to do that. Um, and once I can shed, hopefully, my judgmental mind and all the other rubbish, hmm. there's only love left, isn't there? Yes. And so I keep that as my sort of spiritualism going forward, even though it's only within myself. And uh, someone approached it from uh, Morris Balmer yesterday, that if, if you save one person, you save the whole world. Mm -hmm. And that, the, I think love um, can conquer a great deal, can't it? I believe so. And if we became, well, if we all became love, we wouldn't have a single problem, would we? No, we wouldn't. That was a really lightweight thing of me to say, but um, that's my belief. But, it, but as a philosophy, what better is there? Hmm? You know, you said something, Hazel, when you first started off your address about where there are organisations, there will be people who will um, disagree and fall out. Hmm. And isn't that so true? And do you think, Hazel, that this is often what puts people off from coming to a spiritualist church because in most of our churches, there is upheaval, disagreement, people who are supposed to be spiritual, who do nothing but cause problems and criticize and pull to bits, and then never do anything to help out. I would like to say yes, but also no. <laughs> yes, for those that know about it, but a very, very definite no, because there are a lot of people out there that have no concept of what is going on behind the scenes. And therefore, no, it, it has no impact upon them whatsoever. Um, yeah, I, of course, the people that would never come into a church, it wouldn't affect. Mm. But for those coming in for the very first time, when they see this harmony, this oh, yes. unity, oh, yes. You know, it can put people off from coming back of to course. what really is a wonderful, I hate to say a religion, a wonderful way of life. Yes. It's a sanctuary. It is. Yeah. And that's really what these places are for, where like-minded people can come together. Yes, you know. absolutely, yes. Right, do we have, we have time for one more question? Where's it going to come from? It couldn't be the birthday girl, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> She's not listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have a question. <coughs> when I came here the first time, what struck me was this this feeling. It's peaceful, it's kind, it's welcoming, and it's just a lovely place to be. And I think this is what spiritualism is about. Yes. Everything else comes to you. Spirit will come to you when, when they really think you are ready for them. And everything is here for you, and that's what this is about. 
And this will never, ever, ever go away. I agree. As well, but this one, because this is personal. I feel this is probably the very original exactly. religion. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Because we, collectively, were at this long before we had people who wanted to have power. Give us books to read. And, and exactly. Around. Whereas, really, we, we don't need those things. Conscience. It is. Personal. Personal conscience, but it's also a being driven by our guiding friends. Right. Yeah. No, I couldn't agree with you more. Don't you think, uh, Hazel, that spiritualism should, should make us better people? Yes. It should make us more compassionate, but more this is, But this is, again, our personal development. Because it doesn't matter what religion you're in, if you stick by dogma and just the traditional values, etc., there is no personal development. And our development is literally down to us, N not anybody else. Spirit can show us the way, but we don't have to follow, do we? Now, something that you said before about when we're talking about progress here, so, and about how today we have so many, so many distractions. And when you think of the Eastern religions, you know, the yogis, how do they communicate? They go somewhere and sit in the silence, mm. and maybe for days and sometimes for weeks. Mm. And we only touch on the edge of that. Don't very we? much, we touch on the edge yeah. of it. Very much so. Well, friends, can we thank Hazel? Very, very much. And as you know, that before the demonstration of mediumship, we usually play a nice piece of music. And you probably noticed when you came in that I was playing a little bit of the 60s and 70s music. You know, it doesn't have to be kind of religious music in a place like this. I know that at uh, Reading, I was telling, <laughs> I was telling Hazel, Dennis Jones has an evening of mediumship on a Thursday and he's playing rock music loud as they come in. And before the medium does the demonstration or his demonstration, he plays Elvis Presley singing blue suede shoes. Well, look at that. <coughs> and he reckons everybody is moving about in the audience, in the congregation. And, you know, maybe that's what we need. And it's bringing all the young people in. Because without the young people, hey, who's going to take over? Right, I'm going to play a word about to love all our points. <coughs> As Hazel brings the two worlds together with a demonstration of communication, but you will require your voice should she come to you, so you will speak to Hazel, won't you? Yes. Wonderful. With a demonstration of mediumship, I leave you in the capable hands of Hazel Brewer. Good evening again. Good evening. Right, those two can leave just before we start. <laughs> that was a joke. That was a joke. <laughs> no. Okay, every medium is different, as you all know, so... Um, the way I work is, I feel I want to come to the lady over there in the white, please. Um, yes, isn't it amazing? Everybody goes, oh, is that me? <laughs> Don't you know what you're dressing? Yeah, you. <laughs> um, I've got a lady beside me. She is, if I said to you, she's peas in a pod as far as you are concerned. Can you understand that, please? And, you know, it doesn't matter if we're talking facially. It doesn't matter if we're talking personality and character. You're like mini-me's. You know what I mean? Thank you. No, don't thank me. She's, this, is, this is your mother, yes? yes. And um, she is, I mean, you must have heard this before because this lady is so overwhelmingly proud of you. You understand that because she has watched you and you have not had an easy time of late. Can you understand that, please? And um, she's telling me that of late, um, there have been times when you've kind of gone, I can't put it any other way, because <laughs> that's what she impressed upon me. Um, and she wants to know why you beat yourself up the way you do. Can you understand why she's saying that, please? Um, because there's absolutely no reason to do so. Absolutely no reason. If anybody should be doing that, you are not the one. 
You understand? She's telling me that, that in your lifetime you've actually done a turnaround of something like 180 degrees on the way you think. Can you understand that, please? And I mean, it really is a 180 degree turnaround. And she and others are going, because it was not easy. Fighting yourself, she's telling me, was the hardest part of it. Can you understand? I keep saying, can you understand? That's my way. I know you hear and I know you understand, but you know what I'm saying. Okay. And who had the yellow shoes? And these are yellow. We've got to go back and these look like children's sandals, but they are yellow. They might have been yours. All I've, all I've got is a pair of yellow sandals. Um, oh, and um, a bouncy ball and lots of things for children to play with because you, my love, she's saying, need to get out to play. Can you understand that? Because you have been so focused and so, um, not withdrawn exactly, but so trapped within your own world, you understand, that she wants you to get out, go out to play, form new friendships. Can you understand that as well? Because some of those you've had and have are not dying as such, but they're not serving you anymore, you understand? Because they haven't moved on, you have. And now it's time to make another move. And the changes around you appear to be quickening, do they not? And they will continue to be quickening as far as you are concerned because you've actually started on a long, long journey. There is no goal, there is no ending, this is a journey. But you already know that, your mother's telling me. And she's quite vocal, she's very um, upfront and excited and, you know, she always was though, wasn't she? Yeah, and um, she lived life to the fullest that she could, did she not? Get out there and live life with us, you're saying. Because right. she'll be side by side, shoulder to shoulder with you every step of the way. And don't ever doubt yourself. Don't ever doubt yourself. Because you've heard your mother. Can you understand this? Yes. And it was a physical hearing yes. that you had. Hmm. She said, now she's found the route, you'll hear quite a lot more. But also, you've mentioned the books you're reading. Yes. She is going, just allow a book to fall open and she will draw your attention to things that are specific for you. So be open-minded, don't look for it, because if you look for it, it won't happen. And pay attention to the details that are happening around you. Can you understand that, please? Because in the past you've missed some, but now it's important that you take on board that which is happening. And she wants to see you with a much lighter heart. Yes. And she's giving you, I thought she was going to give you a bouquet of flowers. No, not a bit of it. What she's actually giving you is, you know one of these baskets full of various fruits that come up like a pyramid? You've got a whole big basket of this fruit. So, um, enjoy. Thank you I'll leave all in love with you and say God bless. God bless. Okay. Okay. I have a gentleman coming up beside me. Um, I would have said he's about here, so to me that's 5'8", hmm, 5'10", five, five, somewhere there. I feel I'm somewhere here with a gentleman. He, is, he has military bearing. What I mean by that is he stands erect. He's not stooped at all. He's somebody that, that always liked good manners. Mind your P's and Q's was something he would have said. And I, I feel I want to be amongst you two gentlemen here, but I'm not quite sure. Um, I feel I've got a father stroke grandfather figure. If he was a grandfather, he very much had a hand around your upbringing, or it was a father figure. Can, can either of you understand that? That's my colleague, because I, I never knew my grandparents. <clears throat> okay. You didn't either. I might be able to introduce you. Just bear with me then, guys. <laughs> this gentleman, um, I feel, was 
Um, it, uh, because of ages and things, it's all very well to say he was of um, a military persuasion. But I'm feeling he was either Navy or Army, not Air Force, if that makes a sense. In fact, I'm feeling that he was Army that went in overseas. Can, does, does that ring a bell with either of you? I've got an uncle who was uh, in the British Expeditionary Force. And the first and second world war. Okay. Yeah. All right. But this gentleman died, I feel, in combat situation. No. Okay. My grandfather died the, yeah, on the 2nd of September 1918 in the first world war. Okay. And he went overseas. He was on a ship. Okay. Yes. No. I feel I'm. I'm. I feel I'm with you then, sir. And um, with this gentleman, do you know anything about him at all? That's all I know. Oh right. Then I'll give you a few details. I'll give you a few, um, but not to labour a point because it won't mean much. But he was somebody who was very straight. Um, no, no, he, d he didn't like liars, cheats, anything like that. He was as straight as a die. This man. He was also very modest in his approach. He wouldn't be, you know, in your face or anything like that. To use the vernacular, um, he was a very capable and competent gentleman. Um, but obviously never um, went to his fruition. If he had lived, he would have, perhaps. You are very much like him. You, according to, to, and this is your grandfather, according to him, you have competency capabilities that you have used, but not necessarily to the full. Can you understand that, please? Um, to the point where on occasion you are a little frustrated because it was never quite enough. Does that make sense? And uh, he also um, says that you are modest almost to a fault, yes? You would never push yourself forward and be the centre of attention and the, the middle of the limelight because it's not your way, you understand. But as a support act, there is none better, you understand? very loyal, you are just like your granddad. And if I could, I would give you his hand to shake because that's what, he's not the kind that would come and give you a big bear hug. It wasn't his way, but very definitely there's a hand to shake here and it's a very firm hand. He didn't go before his time. It was his time. Um, but it was the time for many people. It was wrong because it was a war, but it actually was his time, he's telling me. And you have questioned your forward movement from here on. Does that make sense to you, sir? Uh, no, it doesn't. Okay, let me just see what he's telling me then. I don't mean your mortality, that's not what I mean but it's, it's where you go it for the rest of your life. Does that make more sense? No? Well, let me put it this way. What he's saying or impressing upon me is that there are questions being asked possibly in the background of your head as to whether this is it, this is all there is, and because you have a comfortable way at the moment, yeah, or whether other things are going to take your interest and allow you to become more fulfilled. You go with that. Okay. I knew he wasn't fibbing to me. He's too straight down the line. Um, yes is the answer to the question. But you need to look for it. Meet him halfway. He will draw you in but look for it too, yeah? You need to put yourself in the position of being in the right place, etc. And there is a lot more for you. You've got quite a lot of years left, not that I'm a fortune teller, but this is what he's telling me. You've got quite a number of years left and you will find a great deal of fulfillment within those years. Your comfortable zone will simply increase to becoming more comfortable. You understand? But it's down to you. 
Watch out for, um, have you already had the little things moving in the house? I suppose yes. They're not quite where you leave them. They're either turned or something's not quite where you thought it should be, that kind of thing. Uh, no, not so much that. It's just how I imagine things should be. And, uh, it's my imagination. Or anything. OK. Well, then be careful. Be, be aware that physical things will gently start to take place. Nothing worrying, just slight movements. This is him letting you know he's around you because he's been around you all of your life. He has watched you with interest because you are so close in terms of the way you are. And he's proud, like that lady's mother, your granddad is so proud of you. You have on occasion gone to bed at night thinking you're gonna be doing ABC and woken up thinking, no, I'm going to do X, Y, Z instead. And you've not known why, you've just done it, yes? And it's always worked out for the better. Yeah. Thank him. Thank you. <laughs> no, don't thank me, thank him. <laughs> because this is his influence. He's been talking to you through your dream state. Okay. Is it you that plays cards? Yes, we do, actually. Yes, sir. All are loving one another, accepting one another, and are tolerant of one another. Because Without that, you could have dispersed on more than one occasion. Does that make sense? But he loves the way you are a united force. We're only friends, but we are very Of course. Friends, yeah. yeah, but only. What more is there? Well, no, right. yes, you know, it's the everything, isn't it? And the love that you have reflects your bond together. And for that, he is so proud. And I'm just going to leave you with, oh, okay. He said, I didn't get one, not one that I deserved, but here is a medal for you. And he's going to leave you with that and all his love and say, God bless. Okay. Okay, I have a lady coming up beside me and I think I'm with the lady at the back in the blue top. You didn't look down. I mean, it might be a green top. Is it a green top? You do. She did. She did. She then went. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Turquoise, greeny, blue. Okay. And um, this lady standing beside me again is about my height, my build. Um, but again, she is facially very similar to yourself. Um, she's a lady who was very. <clears throat> precise when she was here. I'm feeling mother again, grandmother, certainly on the maternal line. Um, very precise lady, liked things to be nice, but not to the point where um, she was considered a pain. But do you understand why I'm saying it in these terms? She would prefer a cup and sauce of nice china rather than a great big mug, because that just didn't feel right against her mouth. It had to be nice. And she preferred to, to nicely eat with a knife and fork, not the American shoveling, you know, because that went against the grain, didn't it? <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, but you know what I mean. I'm going home now. <laughs> I do apologise, but you know what I mean. <laughs> How to win friends and influence people. <laughs> you see, that's what happens when you're in the zone, you forget. Um, but coming, <laughs> coming back to the lady at the back there, um, your mother was somebody who um, had very high ideals. Can you understand this, please? Um, she, she, oh, she, she strove to have the best in her life, not in an arrogant way, don't misunderstand, because I don't feel an ounce of arrogance around her. But everything she did was for the best for her family. Everything she did was to mm, stretch the money out to get the best, and if she couldn't, then she wouldn't bother. Does that make sense? Because it had to be the best she could afford, the best 
that was right because for her, in her early life, there were a lot of struggles, you understand this, and there was a lot of making do and a lot of not enoughness, if that makes sense. Um, and so when, once she started to have control of any finances, she wanted things better. And she wanted the best she could have for you too, you understand. And you sometimes found this a real pain in your younger life, you understand? Well, she, she's, she's saying you might have wanted something that... Mm, how do you phrase this? wasn't as good as she would have wanted you to have had. Does that make sense? No. Not really for you. Okay, let me just re, re double check then. Just let me just double check. No. I'm sorry, I can't take that back. She wanted to give you the best. Sometimes you wanted something that your friends had, which she didn't con then consider was the best for you and you didn't always like it. That's, that's what she's telling me. She's also telling me that, um, again, she was a very competent, very capable lady, mentally switched on, mentally alert, very, again, precise. She didn't say things unless she really meant them, did she? She's telling me definitely not. But we all remember ourselves the way we want to, don't we, folks? But no, seriously, she's telling me that she wouldn't say... She believed very much that if you've got nothing nice to say, it's really better to say nothing. Does that make sense? Yes. And also, while she might hear the gossip, because she did quite like hearing it, she would never try to pass it on because she always put herself in the shoes of the person who was being gossiped about. Can you understand that? Because your mum had the ability to walk a million miles in everybody else's shoes, didn't she? Yes, she did. Yes, she did. And she was a lady who was full of compassion, was she not? And the underdog was always the one she would fight for. Always the one she would fight for. Because the one that was winning didn't need that hand. You understand? And you are again very like your mother in this. You always go to the underdog and give them the help rather than back the winner. You understand, not that the underdog can't become the winner, but you know what she's saying. And she is again very proud. There's a lot of pride going on tonight. I'm feeling not just love, but pride in the people that are coming through to talk to you. Who's Uncle Jack? Do you know Uncle Jack? There's an Uncle Jack and a Joan, and somewhere I feel a Steph, Stephanie or a Stephen somewhere. Have I left you or am I still with you? Those names are not mine. Do they mean anything to anybody else? I have an Uncle Jack and I've got an Auntie Joan. Right. They were married. They were married. In which case, I'll, I'll come to you in a second if I may. Nothing like butting in, is there, eh? <laughs> Sorry. That's a joke. Um, your mum, she was a little self-effacing on occasion, wasn't she? Um, and she was always good at rising to the challenge for other people, but never very much for herself, you understand. Don't make the same mistake. When you have a need, stand proud and let it be known. Because there's nothing that you need to worry about by asking for help. Does that make sense to you? because it's all around you and ready to be given. Don't be as independent as she was, because you don't need to be, okay? And for her, she's giving to you um, the most beautiful brooch. Um, it's, it's, like, it's kind of like the colouring of your top there, but it's very intricate, but it has within it the infinity sign you know, the number eight on its side. And she's giving that to you for the infinite amount of love that she holds in her heart for you. Because you know, because you felt her, have you not? You know she's not very far away. And she will always be close whenever you ask her to be so. 
All right, and I'm going to leave all her love with you and say God bless. Now let me see what I've got for for you, okay. Um, oh, first of all, I've got a dog running in. Um, now I don't do dogs. It's a dog of about this high. Um, it's not a huge donkey dog. It's it's like um, just below knee height. Does that make sense to you, please? And if I said this dog feels as if it's got 20 tails, you know, it's wagging all over the place. It's so excited. It can hardly be controlled or control itself, but it's now making its way down to you. Okay. I've got a lady coming in. Um, and again, I feel this is on the mother's side of the family. Uh, she's the one that shouted out the names to get your attention. Uh, I feel this is your mother. And again, I'm feeling that there is, I'm saying feeling because I'm not seeing, I'm sensing. I'm feeling that there is, again, a lot of facial uh, likeness. Does that make sense to you, please? I look more like my grandmother than my mother. Okay, just, does your grandmother, let me, let me give you the age group that I'm feeling. The lady I've got with me is somewhere around, give or take a decade, 60, <laughs> remember. She's not telling me. She's showing herself to me around 60. She looks somewhere around 60. Does that make sense? Okay. And if I said to you that she, um, she was a very down-to-earth lady, uh, she didn't put on airs and graces, she didn't like people that put on airs and graces because she felt they were just being false. They were trying to put forward a facade that certainly wasn't the true them, and she liked to deal with true, mm -hmm. honest, down-to-earth people. Does this make sense to you, please? I'm really that right, yeah. so I'm quite young. Right, okay. Am I going to introduce you to her as well, then? <laughs> All right. Um, again, a lady straight down the line. Um, couldn't abide liars, couldn't abide cheats. Wouldn't put up with it. She would give people one chance, she would even give them a second chance. If they then still persisted in being what she calls the bad one, then she'd cut them off completely. And um, she would say, I'm sorry, you've had your chance. I don't want to know you. I don't want you in my life or in my circle. Does that make sense to you? Yes, I really like She was very much like that. Um, there were no, no, like I said, no airs and graces, but very definitely a definite person in her own right. But she was love on legs. Misunderstood often, but love on legs. She re the way she's making me feel, she reminds me, and don't take this the wrong way, a little bit like Mother Teresa. She, I'm not saying she's a saint in any way, please, because she's very much a grounded lady but she would do her best for other people until the, 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 the door, drawbridge was drawn, yes. And she's saying that in her life, um, there were a lot of things that she was very, very grateful for. Most of the time, her health stood up. Most of the time, she had food, clothing, warm bed, etc. She had no problems in those fields at all. But mentally, she not tortured herself, but she conflicted herself with which was the best way to go. Um, if there were two ways, she sometimes found the difficulty in deciding, particularly if it was between friends and it was choosing a side, she found that so difficult until she decided she didn't need to choose. And she wants to say to you, don't choose. If anybody puts you in that position, don't choose. Don't allow yourself to be made to choose. Okay? And it's a really important message for you right now um, because there are things happening around you where uh, it's the, people are asking you to make choices. You understand that. And your grandmother is saying that. Don't choose. You don't need to sit on a fence. You just need to state, I refuse to choose. Okay. And what she will do is she will give you all the strength you need 
to help you through that. All right. And I hope you like bananas, because for you, no. Oh, you're not going to like her gift then. Well, I don't know how to tell you. You know, if you go to a plantation and they cut off the whole arm and there's all these bunches of, but well, you're getting a whole heap of bananas. All I, all I can say is do with them what you will. But she's sending all her love to you and giving you the bananas and saying, just remember. And she's beside you to help you through. You're very welcome. So I'll say God bless to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Friends, come, we say a nice big thank you to Hazel Brewer for stepping into the breach tonight and doing such a lovely meeting for us tonight. And I'm sure we shall see Hazel back in our church again. And well, that's all I'm going to do. Check the notice board, ladies and gentlemen. All of the events are on the notice board and uh, that way you can't miss anything. Can I just say once again a nice big thank you to Hazel Brewer for a lovely meeting tonight. Thank you to you for coming along and I'm sure that sometime if you go on to YouTube you will see Hazel on YouTube because Bill's been uh, filming her all night. So thank you to Bill for that and thank you to you. Have a safe and a pleasant journey home. Good night and God bless.